part two on uh, my flight to New York. Uh, we are doing, uh, we're actually uh, finishing up uh, the descending and uh, uh, the and also the landing. You know, uh, we're doing the, the descending and we are going to do, uh, and after that is the, and after that comes uh, landing. So I'm doing uh, part two, and uh, this video is mostly about uh, the fundraising that I, I want to do. You know, I've, I came to the realization that uh, I'm not gonna be here for too long, and uh, I can only get uh, the job that I got can only pay me uh, only pay me so much. And uh, I wouldn't be able to get everything that I that I really want to, you know. But uh, I will uh, get the necessary. You know, I will get the necessary. Uh, it's a lot of people out there uh, in Africa who look up uh, to me. You know, uh, I don't went out there and uh, show them the value of uh, of their uh, their environment. Not to say uh, their land or whatever, just the environment. Uh, I don't show I don't uh, show them how uh, they can uh, actually make their life a lot uh, better if they just uh, put in work, a little bit of effort every day. Uh, you know, they don't have to work. I told them that you don't have to work all day. You just gotta work smart. You could do uh, two hours a day. And that two hours a day for one month is going to feed you for a year, you know. So I went over there, I don't pitch, you know, some people, uh, you know, they were uh, willing to listen. Uh, some obviously are not, uh, because that's how Africa is. Uh, Africa is so laid back. Africa is really uh, laid back. You know, the people over there just want to chill. That's so all. They just want to chill. Uh, Cause uh, the Most High had uh, blessed them with so much. You know, literally in Africa, you cannot go hungry to bed unless you really wanted to. You know, cause uh, there are fruits everywhere. Everywhere in Africa, there are fruits. So if you were hungry, you are going to do. You could do. You could be a scavenger. You could be a scavenger or you know, run up to somebody's property. They don't have guns over there. Like nobody's gonna shoot you because you stole a mango or a papaya or a pineapple. You know nobody's gonna shoot you for that. They chase you if they see you. Uh, you know, cut their mangoes or or uh, um, banana or let's say a uh, pineapple without asking. They'll chase you. But I'm saying like if you are really hungry and you really want to eat. You know, or uh, you're not gonna go uh, hungry. Uh, you could go, you could ask around. You could go to uh, neighborhood and ask around. You know, in the city, it's gonna be a little harder uh, because the city is uh, cities are congested and there's not enough uh, land for people to actually grow uh, food, uh, grow fruits and vegetables. You know, there's not a, enough uh, space to do that in the cities. Uh, but one thing about Africa is that uh, cities are always surrounded by villages. You know, uh, there are villages uh, like every about let's say about five miles. You know, about five miles uh, uh, radius. Uh, there's a village. Uh, if you don't, even if you don't have a car, you know, if you don't care to walk about two two to three hours to the nearest uh, village you could actually work uh, walk for two to three hours uh, get to the uh, to the nearest uh, village that's uh, near you and I kid you not when you get there there's gonna be an abundance of food you're gonna have fruits everywhere uh, people would invite you to come and eat if you uh, if you really went up to somebody's uh, if you went up to somebody's door, knock on the door, and went been like, uh, yo, I'm hungry. I've been walking all day. I'm hungry. I'm trying to get something to eat. 
they will actually feed you. They will give. You, they will give you food. Um, but if you don't have time to eat, to sit and eat with them, uh, you can ask for permission to get a coconut, uh, to get uh, any type of fruit, uh, to get a mango, pineapple, sour sour, you name it. Whatever it is that you want, that's out there. Uh, oranges, uh, whatever it is, lemon. Anything that you want, um, if you care for it, if you want it, all you gotta do is go ahead and ask, and they will uh, gladly allow you to go ahead and uh, get whatever you want. Sometimes the fruit is even like on the ground, like it, uh, it will actually like naturally it will fell, it will fall on, uh, it will fall on the ground naturally. You know, so when you get there, you're gonna you see a lot of fruits on the ground that you could get. So I say that to say this: uh, the Most High, uh, the Most High, had uh, He had blessed Africa. You know, He made uh, Africa in such a way that uh, you don't need to work to eat in Africa. Like I swear to God, if it weren't for uh, globalization and Africa was have was never invaded. And Africa was left alone. I kid you not, nobody would ever work in Africa except to like to build your little hut or uh, home or whatever. Once you build it, you are good. The food is going to grow by itself because that's exactly what is happening in Africa. Food actually grows by itself. So it yeah, has not been that uh, uh, for the invader, the invaders to uh, like, like. Uh, walk into Africa, bump into Africa, nobody would ever uh, walk out uh, work in Africa. Nobody ever work in Africa. Because that's how blessed uh, Africa is. But uh, nevertheless, Africa uh, got invaded. You know? And uh, Africa, uh, the, 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 the most severe invasion of Africa is in the mind, in, in the mind of the people. You know, instead of them keeping their tradition and living the way they were, uh, they were meant to live uh, before the white men came to Africa. Now they want to, you know, they want to live. Uh, they want to do what they see on TV. And now what that the, what that did is it brought uh, a lot of people in you know, in the same area, uh, which are called uh, cities. You know, back then. Back in the day, you know, you wouldn't, you couldn't find a million Africans living in one area. You know, Africans were spread out. You know, there would be a, a village every maybe two miles, uh, two miles uh, or so. You know, two miles or so, there will be like one village, and that one village would have maybe like a hundred thousand people or less. So there would be like a bunch of villages every like every uh, like every two miles. Every two miles, every two or three miles, there will be like one village, and that's pretty much how Africa always been. You know, there was there there were plenty of land available for people to do whatever. You know, and for the most part, people in Africa, they they didn't know how to like grow crops and all of that. They had it all, and uh, they ate a uh, bush meat. They ate bush meat, so which means they didn't have to do farming. None of that. They didn't have to do farming. They didn't have to. Um, they didn't have to raise uh, chickens. They would just let chickens out there. Chickens would be walking, and that's how they would always constantly have chickens. Cause chickens always like since chickens want to be around people, they will always be walking around. You know, they would have cattle and goats and you name it. And those things like ducks, they will always roam around uh, people. Like they won't be. They wouldn't go in, 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 in into the bush, but then uh, they also have bush meat. You know, they have they eat bush meat, which means you know when a male you know wanted to impress a, a female, they will go in, in, uh, in inside the bush and get the most uh, delicious animals in the bush to uh, to uh, 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 not donate to impress. Uh, a lady that they were fond of, you know, and that's how Africa.
Africans. I mean, I mean, some of them still do live uh, that way. That way, you know, some of them still kept uh, the tradition. You know, some people in Africa still live the way uh, it, will, it, it used to be, the way it's always been. People still live like that. But uh, since the mindset of the African man and woman it is uh, so messed up. Uh, sometimes they want to do uh, the things that they are not naturally, uh, no, the, the things that are not natural to uh, Africa. You know, they want to live the lifestyle of like Western uh, European or maybe again yeah, Western European. Like they want to live in cities. They want to have like millions of people in a city. Now you have like uh, one city with three to 20 million people who uh, from history, from the culture, are not used to, you know, working uh, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, five days a week, maybe seven days a week, because that's not in their DNA, that's not in their blood. They want to live the, the European lifestyle, but they don't have the will to work like the European because the European he works seven days a week and he do work 24-7 I'm not saying one man is not going to work 24-7 but they have three shifts you know they got the, the morning the, 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 the afternoon shift and the night shift but people in Africa they don't have that kind of mindset they don't have that working mindset but they want to live in cities now Living in cities, you don't have access to bush meat. You don't have access to fruit, abundance of fruit. Of course, if living in the city, you're still going to have fruits, but you're not going to have abundance of fruits. And the people with fruits in the city, they be watchful of their uh, of their fruit, of their food, because they know uh, there are a lot of uh, scavengers. Or, or that cloud is from the hurricane. I forgot to tell you that. Uh, that cloud right there is from the hurricane that's bothering uh, uh, Florida right now. You know, that cloud. So we had a bump. Uh, our flight was really bumpy. You know, landing was, was uh, it was really bumpy when we, when we, uh, I mean, uh, descending through that cloud was very bumpy. It was scary. You know, a lot of people were scared. But, uh, but, uh, but we made it. We made it safe. But I can tell you those clouds. And all of that, that's from the hurricane uh, down in Florida. And that thing had was uh, rocking that plane. Like, it rocked that plane real good. And people were scared. So, now, these are the African. They want to live that the European. They want to live in cities. But they don't have the will to work as hard as the European to keep those cities alive. They don't have the will to work 24-7 like the white man does to keep those cities alive. So what do they do? They are confused. They don't know. Like, uh, like the cities are here. 10 million people living in one area. One spot. Not a bond. Like, there's, like, you, don't live, you are not in a village where there are there's, like, uh, an abundance of food, water, everything. Now you are in the city. What do you do? And um, most people over there in Africa don't have the solution. Most people in Africa don't have the solution for that. That's where I come in. People like me, that's where we come in. You know, because we do have the solution. And the solution is farming. Is uh, is the solution is farming and, and organizing. That's when I come in. Because I see an opportunity. For me, it's an opportunity. Of course, I'm helping. I'm helping my people. I'm helping myself, and I'm helping my children. Uh, right now, I got one, but I plan on having a lot. So, I'm helping me, my children, and my people over there. You know, my people in Africa, in America, in Europe, wherever my people are. What I'm doing right now, I'm paving the way for all my people. It don't matter where you're from. I'm paving the way for everybody, especially my children. So, 
say the African don't have the solution. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to work like the white man. But they want to live in cities like the white man. That's not going to work. If you are going to have a 10 million people living in one, you know, one area, you gotta, you gotta have, be able to provide. You know, you gotta be able to provide services. You gotta be able to provide food, water, shelter. You gotta provide a lot of things. You gotta be able to provide roads and all of that thing. You gotta organize to keep those people in that, you know, in that congested area. You know? So I'm doing a small part. I'm doing my part. My part is to provide the food because that's the most important. Since uh, these people don't want to be living in their villages, they want to come in the city because the city lifestyle is good. It's a, got a lot of people in one area, so you can meet new people. You could uh, uh, sit and chill all day. You know all that stuff. They want to have all that, but they don't. Have, they don't. They don't have time to go in their village and work the food and bring the food to the city. That's when I come in. That's when I come in. Like, and and my, my goal is to sell sell them food i gotta bring them food you know i gotta bring i gotta provide them with the, the most basic service that uh, every human being need and that's food and water and you know and that's something i want to do and yeah not not that i want to do i am doing it i'm actually putting things uh, together I, i'm in the process like i'm in i'm in i'm in the process i'm like i'm in the i'm in the I mean, that, and um, I should be able to, you know, start to feed them soon. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here in America. I need to get some tools to make my work a little easier, and to make the work of my workers, the people who work for me over there, I want to make their life better. I want to make their work a little easy. And we want to uh, grow a lot of food, walking a little bit of time, and making quadruple the amount of food that we made with no equipment. That's why I'm getting those equipment, because uh, uh, mechanized farming is way better. It's way, way, way better than uh, working with a bunch of people. And, and you know that you can't keep. 120 people satisfied in Africa. Uh, some will always run. Some will get your money and flee. So it's it's it's, it's a it's, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge. You know, it's a big challenge working with too many people in Africa. That's why I'm trying to get these equipments. Cause having these equipments, I'm need like four to five people who are serious, and I already know. Like I know their mindset. I know who wants to work, and I know who wants to take advantage. Because some people want to take advantage of you, and some people really want to work. Some people really want to earn uh, their money uh, the right way. So, and I know these people. I know them. I know those people, and uh, those people are the one I'm gonna work with. You know, that's why I need uh, all the equipment that I um, that I'm gonna get. And those equipment would allow me to work with maybe four to five people who are serious. And we are going to produce uh, more food, ten times more food uh, than uh, when I was when I had like dirty people, which I had to chase, I had to beg, I had to do all that. And since they knew that I really I needed them, they would uh, play with my mind, play with my time. I don't have time for that. That's why I'm getting all these equipments. Cause now I got the upper hand. I got my equipment. I don't need y'all. Y'all want to work for your money. You want y'all want you want work to send your kid to school. Now you gonna come begging me. I'm not begging you no more. I'm not begging nobody. Cause I got my tools. I'm gonna be able to produce uh, ten times more than what I did with y'all. So now. I'm going to have honest people who will come to work for me because I'm not going to be out there running and begging for workers. Anyway, uh, I'm working uh, to raise the money so I can buy those tools, but I need to also get a camera so I can capture some better pictures for you guys. And I also need a drone. You know, I don't really need those things, but those will be good 
uh, to get good videos for you guys so I'm gonna be doing a fundraising for three thousand dollars you know that's gonna be that's gonna be run for like almost three months so y'all gonna have time to you know, put in a little bit of bread heavy now and then and uh, when I reach that um, uh, when I when I get the, 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 the right amount of money when, when when I hit that number I'm going to buy I'm going to order a good camera and a good drone and I will send you you know when when those things come to my house I will send you the picture I will show you the, 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 the camera the drone and when I get when I go back to Africa I'm gonna I'm gonna edit I'm gonna give you some good video there are those things are going to be entertaining I'm going to entertain you all y'all are going to be happy you know trust and believe me like I'm going to give you the best of the best the best of my time I'm going to take time to do it right you know so the goal for me is going to go up uh, this week the goal for me is going to go up so I'll be on the lookout for it you know it's going to go up I want you to make those donations every time whenever you can you know I got two and a half months to come up with three thousand dollars so I can get a good ass camera and a drone that would be good for me when I go uh, back to Africa and that would be good for you also make sure to like share subscribe and I will talk to you on the next one peace